Bonjour, Rob. Ah, Christian Prudhomme, it's wonderful to have you back in Australia. I uh, know you see cycling from a privileged position, but I think you also see cycling in a different, uh, from a different perspective in Australia. You've experienced what the Tour Down Under is like. You understand the following of cycling here. It's grown enormously in the last 20 years, and I think the Tour de France can be thanked for that. Could you just give us a quick overview of your emotions in 2023 after three pandemic-influenced Tours de France and uh, an entirely different world to what we knew when you and I last saw each other in 2019? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very nice to have, again, uh, many, many people on the roads, to have uh, fans everywhere. I, uh, I miss the fans, of course. <laughs> during 2021 and 2020 and 2021. So uh, um, the last two was just unbelievable. Uh, Grand Depart, the start in Copenhagen in Denmark with so many fans, two million fans uh, in, in three days. And of course, it was uh, like a, a wonderful Danish story with, with, with Vingegaard from the, the before the start to the finish and to after the finish, uh, the, the, the images of, of Vingegaard on, on the City Hall in Copenhagen were just like the images of Eddie Merckx in 1969 in Brussels at the City Hall. So it was very, very nice. And uh, the start of the season was very good. Paris was, a, the, I think, the best edition in the last 10 or 15 years. Thanks to Pogacar, Vingegaard, and for us, French David Godu, who was Ooh. second overall. And that's good to have, uh, of course, in France, uh, a, a, good, a good rider. But uh, uh, Pogacar impressed me a lot. Uh, Vingegaard, too, because he, he was really cool. <laughs> uh, we saw him the day after at the end of Paris Nice because we had this press conference on the last two stages of the tour in 2024 in Nice, in Monaco. And uh, he was with us, and he was very, very cool. Uh, and I, I think he's, that means he's very confident. Uh, even if we know uh, Pogacar wants his revenge. <laughs> <laughs> it seems obvious. I mean, let's, let's go straight to the, the big challenges. Pogacar's making it clear. With the, it's a statement racing every time he's, like, he's on the bike. Um, it must be... Uh, a wonderful, wonderful for you to see someone so determined, so enthusiastic, so capable. To, 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 uh, Pogacar can do anything. Uh, he can attack when you expect him to attack. He can attack when you don't expect him to attack. He can attack uh, 100 kilometers from the finish. So that, that's just nice. And we have other riders like him. I mean, not with such results, mm. but Van Aert, uh, Van Der Poel, I hope so, again, uh, Alain Philippe, uh, uh, and, and this battle, this fight between Pogacar and the Jumbo Visma Vingard, but the Jumbo Visma team is, is very important. Duels, duels in sports, uh, that's the best thing we can have, uh, and not only in tennis. So we know that when I was a kid, it was uh, Eddie Merckx, versus Luis Ocania, for example, or Eddie Merz versus Roger de Vamec in the classics. So, Greg Lemon versus uh, Laurent Fignon, uh, Bernard Reynaud versus Laurent Fignon. So, to, to have Pogacar versus uh, Galavin Gugard, it's very good for cycling. When we preview the tour, we're looking for anticipation, suspense, um, an attacking scenario. And when uh, Jumbo Visma took the initiative last year and uh, put Pogacar to the sword, it was exactly what you dream of. Uh, 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 I sent a text message to uh, uh, Richard Plugge during the Col du Granon stage. During the stage. Because in the car, in the red car, behind the riders, uh, I was watching the, the, the live coverage from the fight. Because I, I was behind the leaders at that time in the stage. And I, I said to him, I don't know what will be the end, but, but merci. To tell him, I don't know what will be the end, but thank you so much. And at the end of the day, uh, we got one. But uh, there were so many attacks from, from the Jumbo with my riders. Beam, uh, uh, Roglic, bam, uh, 
Dingegaard, and once again, and at the end, uh, Pogacar has had to give up. So for me, that was the, the, the best mountain stage in the tour uh, in the last 30 years, maybe. <laughs> it was just unbelievable. And uh, it was what, yes, what we, what, what we want to, to, to see. But uh, Pogacar wants once again his revenge. What struck me too is uh, his attack on the last lap of the Champs Elysees. Last July, the so last day, the so, so last climb, if I can say climb, from the Champs Elysees, and, and uh, he attacked. Just to say, next year, <laughs> I will be back. <laughs> That was very strong, and uh, we, I don't know why, but uh, we, uh, Jonas Vingegaard and Jumbos Visma told us uh, from uh, the very beginning of, of January, uh, we will ride Paris-Nice, and we had rumors about Pogacar, saying he will be at Paris-Nice, but it wasn't official, and uh, I, I'm, I'm sure he wanted to, to, to fight against Vingegaard and to beat him as soon as possible from the beginning of the season, and that's what he did. Yeah. But Vingegaard was very cool. Very, very, very cool. Good and very cool. And saying, I still have work to do, but he was very, very cool. Not, uh, not worried at all. And there's a lovely level of sportsmanship. We see them often you know, high-fiving one another and congratulating each other. It's a serious rivalry, but and not necessarily a friendship, but uh, a great deal of respect. It's a fantastic duel. Yes, yes. In the last stage in the Pyrenees, last year in the Tour, after the, the climb, the Col de Spandel, and after the climb and the descent, Pogacar tried many, many times, and, and uh, he fell. So he went to all was possible to do. And after, they shook hands. And that was great, because it, it, it was just after they did all they could do. And it was over, but at a very, very high level. Mm. As a Frenchman, as the director of the race, which hasn't been won by a local rider, let's say, for a, since 1986, you must be desperate. Uh, we talked about the strengths of David Cordu. We've seen Alaphilippe do everything he can to keep a yellow jersey, which it was not possible. It was entertaining, as always. Is there someone uh, in your sights? And um, can we also just discuss the concept of a, a French organization trying to design a course for a French rider? It, 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 it's never the case. No. Uh, we, we, we design races for a certain kind of riders. For example, for, for punchers. Uh, we have now many, many, uh, uh, several uh, finish lines on, on climbs for uh, Riders like Wout van Aert, uh, Mathieu van der Poel, Junior Lafitte. Uh, but it's not for a, a Frenchman. Mm. We, we, we want a, a battle, we want a fight. We want the, the, the most emotional race. Of course, if a, a Frenchman can win, that's, that's better. And it has been a long time ago since Bernard Renault. Yes, I agree, you're right. But uh, it was good to, to see uh, David Godu on, on Paris, especially in the Col de la Couillole, on the, on the Sunday, to attack. Not only to stay in, the, in Pogacar's will, but to attack twice. So, uh, I know, uh, if everything goes as it, is, uh, as it has to go, uh, Pogacar and Vingegaard are, are the best riders, the best climbers, the best riders, of course. And <laughs> they can aim at the podium. All the others, Jane Lay, uh, David Godu, uh, uh, Simon uh, Yates, and other people, other riders. But who, who knows? Who knows? L look at... Uh, uh, Chris Froome and Egan Bernal were on the top of their game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it yeah. I, I hope, I hope Egan Bernal will, will come back. I hope. Yes. Uh, not only at the start of the tour, because he's a very, very nice guy, and he, he, his fall was so awful. 
Mm. But uh, uh, is it possible now to be uh, as good as Pogacar and, and Vingard in the mountains? I, I really don't know. Um, but yes, who knows? At the bottom of Col du Granon, last July, when we all saw Jonas uh, Pogacar did that, everybody thought uh, he would win the, the stage and, and, and the tour because uh, he had already, at that time, two stage wins. And 20 minutes after, it was completely different. So, so we don't know. We don't know. Mm. Let's just talk quickly about Vingegaard as a person. We, we see he's very uh, family orientated. His wife, Trini, has a lot to do with him. She, yeah. she manages his day to day rhythm. Um, do you speak with him a lot? Um, there was a a lot no, but, but he, 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 he was uh, riding by Nice and he was with us for the press conference in Nice mm -hmm. on, on Monday, and his wife was uh, with us too. And uh, I found a, a, a very relaxed person uh, that impressed me. It was not a guy who hadn't uh, won uh, a race the day before. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not at all. I think he has, of course, a goal uh, to be once again the winner of the Tour. And he knows what he does. What is he doing? Uh, even if... Uh, Pogacar <laughs> is here, for sure. Yeah, yeah. What's nice about listening to you speak about the examples of racing which impressed you is that it's clear you're still a fan of cycling. Uh, I think when you first took the role, you became concerned because it was so obvious all of the other things you had to manage. And it was quite frightening for you, seeing the crowds and... Uh, and, and thinking that harm could come to the public. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Safety, safety, safety. It's always the, the same. It's, it's, uh, it's the most important thing. Uh, every year you have more and more uh, things along the route uh, to protect the, 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 the drivers and the cars but that are very, very dangerous for, for the riders. So uh, it's it's always the same same stress for that always always always. Mm. So there was a car on the stage on the road on the stage on the last day which influenced the, 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 the chase. It's an example of what can go wrong, but you can't police every single driveway. So could you just? I know we've done this before, and it's part of your routine, necessary, let's say, but to explain the level of security that does exist and why it's so awkward to just make amendments to a bike race. Yes, because we, are, we haven't a stadium. Mm -hmm. We haven't our stadium. We haven't our swimming pool. We, the, the, the roads don't belong to us. Uh, the riders can use the roads for a certain amount of time. So uh, everything can happen everywhere, uh, even even if we are doing everything possible. Even if the French police, uh, French gendarmerie, does everything possible, but you can put uh, uh, somebody uh, in front of every house. That's just impossible. Mm. Yes. You talked about your favorite mountain stage in the last thirty years already. You've described that, but I wonder if when you look back on the stages and you've seen many examples and you've seen it up close and personal. So I was trying to think of an interesting question that is simple and it's this. Mountains or echelons because of wind? <laughs> <laughs> I love echelons and um, you know that. Really? I love it because you, you, you never know. You, you, you can think about a, a stage, for example, uh, 2015, it was made for echelons. Um, the, the finish line uh, in Zealand oh, on yeah, the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was made for Echelon and they were Echelons. But the, the, the stage, stage two in Denmark was made for Echelons and they, they weren't <laughs> Echelons. And two hours before, the wind was just perfect. But when the riders arrived, it, it was a headwind, so it, it was nothing. Mm. So. Sometimes you, 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 you do everything to have echelons, and you have echelons or not. 
but sometimes you don't know uh, the echelons uh, to Albi uh, in 2019 it was not made for echelons and suddenly boom so what is very nice with echelons you never know in mountain stages mm. you know you don't know if it will be as great as the, the grand stage but you know there will be something with echelons you never know so i, I love echelons for, of course Stage 13 in 2013 was magical with uh, yeah. Cavendish winning. But, yeah, uh, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> winning, but I don't know, they, they were 25 or 30 maximum. Yeah, 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 yeah. The battle between Contador and, and, and Chris Froome mm -hmm. on the route of, to, to, to Saint Amand. Yes, it was so nice, so nice, so nice. It's, it's, uh, it's even more, it's even nicer when. when you think it will be only a flat stage with a, with a sprint, and suddenly, 100 kilometers from the finish, bam! Yeah. Yes. Like the stage to uh, Montpellier with uh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. of the favorites, with Froome and Thomas. Uh, it it was just unbelievable to have these four riders, to have the yellow jersey and the green jersey. Uh, as in the mountain stage, Yeah. ahead of the pack. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very nice when it's like that. We've talked a lot about the GC riders. It's obvious that uh, the winner of the Tour de France is what demands the most headlines. But when you have a rider like Wout van Aert, who does it all, uh, it's, uh, I wonder if we could focus on this phenomenon. And, and, and he's a very good guy. Mm. Uh, a few days ago, uh, he said sorry to, to, to Pete Cook because Pete Cook fell mm -hmm. because of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he... I was very impressed by him waiting for Pitcock during the race and telling him, how are you? Uh, he, he's not only a great champion, he's a great man. Uh, so, yes, <laughs> we, we, we like very much to have him in the race, in our races. Mm. Mm. It's nice to talk very loosely about different topics, but when you come to a let's say, a function like tonight's, and we're obliged to talk about the predictable comments of the Tour de France. Does this, uh, does it frustrate you, or do you still see the... Not at all. Uh, I missed Australia during the last six years. Last time I was here, last six or five years, I think it was in, in, in 2018. Uh, I'm happy to, to, to be back in Australia, happy to travel again, happy to see people again out of France. And that was no more the case. It, it was not that easy to uh, switch the Grand Depart in 2020, 21. Uh, we had to switch uh, Denmark from 21 to 22. Uh, at the end of July 2020, only in a few days, because of the new calendar for the Olympic Games and for the European uh, Football Championships, uh, we had to switch, and it was not that easy to do it. Uh, so, uh, so, more or less, you become by proxy an ambassador for cycling, an ambassador for France, yes, an course. ambassador for sport, an yeah, ambassador yeah, yeah, for yeah. clean sport. But uh, I, I like that very much. Yeah. Uh, Cyc cycling is just wonderful. You can do everything with cycling, even if you are not a champion. Mm -hmm. uh, champions are necessary for competition, for all the tour, for all the great races. But you, 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 you can be happy on the bike without being being a champion, of course. And uh, to see the the, uh, the tour as as a the mean of having people on their bikes on a daily basis just to just to go to the office just to go to school that's very very important for me uh, because it's a mean of, of, of fighting uh, for environment mm -hmm. uh, and, and to see the tour as a, an incitation to ride a bike is also very important. Of course, first it's it's sport, our champions, men and women. Uh, it's a show, showcase 
the landscape to have uh, outstanding sceneries. It's to the tour it's, and cycling is to bring people together, but it's also a mean of having people on their bikes, and, uh, and it's it's quite new uh, for me. Uh, 16 years ago, I was not thinking about that. Even if, mm -hmm. when we had the Grand Depart in 2007 in London, the, 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 the mayor of London at that time, Ken Livingstone, wanted the tour because he wanted more people on their bikes in London. And it was the first time I, I, I heard that. And uh, hmm. he was just in advance. And now it becomes apparent that it's quite simply necessary for there to be a change in the a spiritual change of people to understand that they can move a different way. Yeah. What is very important is, I believe, in France, 60% of uh, the travels are less than five kilometers. So you can walk, you can ride your bike, you, you, you can take the, the, the metro, uh, mm -hmm. the cities or the buses, uh, and not each time take your car. Uh, but that's almost philosophical. Mm. Yeah. It, it just needs to be a, a change of mindset. And I think maybe the pandemic's contributed to that. Of course, of course. Yeah. Sure. It's not true. Yes, it's, it's many things and more and more different things. Not only the competition, mm. not only, once again, sh showcasing uh, uh, outstanding sceneries, landscapes, not only bringing people together, but that being events that say to the people, walk and ride your bike. <laughs> yeah, you can do amazing things with yeah, your legs. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're a television man originally, so um, you have a, a very strong respect for the images and what they can evoke. And the helicopter shots in the, in the Tour de France are iconic. So I wonder, after what we've seen, uh, in cyclocross and different events and gravel racing with the drone footage, when we start seeing drones utilized for the coverage of the to, tour. Today it's, it's forbidden in France. Huh? You, you can't use drone like that. Okay. We have only the authorization with, for one drone, but it's a it's, uh, stick to the ground on the, on the Place de la Concorde uh, because of the attacks in, uh, in, in 2015 and 2016, it's forbidden. The, the attacks in Bataclan, uh, okay. Nice. So it's a, it's it's simply a regulation, but you have considered it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I confirm we have to respect the French rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's a French law. I understand. <laughs> but I know the Tour de France has a lot of sway. For example, when you went and did the Grand Depart in London, you had the, the Tour de France Act was, yeah, was yeah. put into place. Can you explain that and then maybe Utilize that as an example to uh, overcome the drone laws. The politician in, in the UK had to, to, to vote something in order to authorize the riders to, to have uh, all, all, all the routes for a certain amount of time, a uh, certain du duration. So, yes, that, that impressed me a lot. Uh, in, in Denmark, on the, the, the Great Belt Bridge, uh, it was the first time the motorway was ah. cut for the riders. Because it's the only way to go from Germany to, to Copenhagen and well, for the tour. It was closed because it was open for the riders. Mm. And only the riders, so it, it, it was closed, uh, I don't remember, but seven, maybe seven you seven hours, seven hours, uh, a day of uh, holidays. Oh. <laughs> so, so and, and given that example, do you think you can make a, a change to the drone uh, situation? Do you see that that will come into your coverage in the coming years or not? That, it's very impressive. The images from the drone are very impressive and they are different from the the, the heli shots. Mm. So, of course, uh, he, he, he. there is also a technical issue because it's. Uh, uh, I talked to, to the people uh, during the Skying World Championships in France in Meribel and Courchevel. 
כוך שווה דמי בן, it's called the laws between them. Between them well. Yeah. So, uh, three minute live coverage uh, on skiing, it's possible. Four hours. Le, le tour, <laughs> it, 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 it's difficult. That, that means you, you need many, many, many groans. <laughs> <laughs> I take your point. I take your point. We have talked a long time already. I respect that you have other things to do, but uh, I'll take every opportunity to keep talking, so you have to stop me. Yeah, about five minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, last year we saw a fantastic debut of the Tour de France for Mother Swift. I know that you're not the race director, but you, you liaise closely with the entire organisation, but it left a big impression on me. It was a big gamble. It had to be done right, and it felt that way in the end. We, we, we have the best... Director possible was Marion. Marion, was, uh, as you know, she was a French champion in 2012. Uh, she's a very, very good commentator on France Television, and she's with us now as the director of the Tour de France Femme Swift. Swift. Um, what, what, what we saw uh, was beyond all our expectations. Uh, It was a great competition, great event. There were many, many people uh, along the roads and more women and more girls than during the tour. On TV, the viewers are the same, but on the route, on the roads, uh, it was different. And that's very, very important because uh, Marion told me uh, when I was a kid, I was on the, on, on the roads and, and uh, I thought uh, there is nothing for me. Mm. And what is very important for us is to have the, the young girls to... We want the young girls to, to say maybe one day we will be part of this pack. And who knows? Maybe the, the, the dream can, con, can, can come true. Uh, so that's very, very important for us. And on TV, as you say, I'm a former TV journalist, Uh, the audience the rates were very, very good. There were 5.2 million viewers in France on the last day, on the last stage in La Planche de Bellefille. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, we were thrilled. And it was the first time I saw um, uh, a competitor uh, laughing, laughing on the finish line in Epernay. Uh, uh, yes, Cecilie uh, yeah. um, yeah. Utrecht Ludwig is the yellow jersey for all the interviews. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's the master in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's just perfect be be because the, the, uh, because for many many people, uh, women's cycling is new. Uh, we need not only champions, we need the the personage, mm -hmm. we need characters, and she's a character. Yeah. And, and uh, answering uh, questions, she's the best. <laughs> Men and women, she's a yellow jersey, by far. So she's such a, a wonderful ambassador for, for women's cycling. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And she's Danish. They are all, they are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, <there's> a... <laughs> and that's nice, that's very nice. Then just let's conclude with what you did on the weekend where you unveiled the, the final stages of 2024, which is huge. It's, um, it's crazy to think there's no Paris in the, in the Tour de France route. It's a, a precedent. Will it happen again or is it just a novelty? No, I, I don't know. Uh, but but we, we, uh, that's not, it's not that easy to, to, to have a finish uh, that is not in Paris. So... Uh, We talked to the mayor of Nice uh, uh, in December 2017 and, and just asking him if, if, because we, uh, of course, uh, we thought it would be very difficult to, to have uh, the finish of the tour and a few days after, five days after the opening ceremony of the, the Olympic Games. So uh, there was no surprise uh, when the, the French government said, said to us, uh, And, uh, and the mayor of Paris, it's, it's, it will be very, 
not very complicated, but impossible to have a finish in Paris. For me, it, it's a change. It will be the first time, because from the very beginning, since 1903, the, the Tour de France organizer, have, organizers have always tried to have the mountains next to the finish. But it's very difficult. And in Nice, you have the mountains next to the finish. You have the sea and the mountains. And, and uh, we needed prestige, because Paris is, is prestige. Uh, Monaco, Nice, La Côte d'Azur, everybody knows, everywhere in the world. And we will have uh, sports. Mm. That's very important for us. Uh, if there is no Paris, we need prestige, because there's sites, but we need sport. And this uh, mountain stage with uh, 4,500 4,400 uh, positive elevation on Saturday with four categorized climbs. Categorized, many more climbs, but four categorized climbs. More than 50 kilometers of climbing on a tight um, and tough stage, only 132 kilometers. And the day after, the first time trial on the last day since 1989, uh, with this uh, uh, Memories uh, of the, the battle between Greg Lemon and Laurent Fignon and the shortest gap at the end of the tour in the history of the tour with only eight seconds. Uh, it would be great. It'll, almost 700 meters of positive elevation, 35 kilometers, and, uh, and it will be uh, on the Belgium National Day. If somebody oh. from uh, who, who will be 24 in 2024, 20, uh, at the same age, Eddie Merckx rode and won his first tour. Uh, just want to speak to a, a Belgian rider. Uh, he's more than welcome. Yeah, yeah. When he wants, but in 2024, it would be great. You're not upset that uh, Remco <laughs> is not riding this year? No, 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 because uh, uh, there is a construction. Uh, he won the Vuelta. Uh, he wants to, 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 to win the, the Giro. And he, he will come after to the Tour. And, and we will have the, the revenge between Pogacar and Vingegaard. And, and other riders are... I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Jay Hinley uh, at the tour. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, what I read uh, him saying, I want to ride the tour, uh, impressed me. That's very good. And I hope Godu will be as good as he was in Paris Nice. And, so, uh, and I hope uh, Mathieu van der Poel will be as good as he was in, in 2021. And I hope Mathieu uh, van der Poel will be as good as he was in 2022. <laughs> 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 so no, we, we have all the champions, we have all the riders uh, to have a, a great race and, and Van Cruyff and Poole uh, is more than, than welcome when he wants uh, and in 2024 it will be great. I think we've made a point today and that is that uh, bike racing may be a simple premise, you go from one line to the next and then someone wins, but we can talk about it forever more. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time to yeah, answer a few questions you, and uh, explain the emotions that come with, with the Tour de France. Thank you so much. Merci.